a lady of good success my dear friends today we bring to you another of our ladies very important apparitions under the title of our lady of good success in quito ecuador though this apparition is 400 years old and 300 years before fatima apparitions it is very relevant for our times from 1594 to 1634 our Lady appeared to a cloistered conceptionist sister in Quito, Ecuador, named Mother Mariana de Jesus Torres. During these 40 years, the Virgin told her that she wished to be known under the title of Our Lady of Good Success. She spoke to the sister about the future times to come for the Catholic Church, particularly during the middle of the 20th century. Our Lady described to her the grave crisis in the Church and also society in general. In fact, the gravity of the crisis was conveyed so distinctly that it caused this poor sister to die from the effects of watching what was to happen to the church in the future. What was it that this good nun saw that caused her to die? Our lady told her that God was ready to punish the world for three main sins, blasphemy, impurity and heresy. The lady said there would be total corruption of customs occurring at the end of the 19th and greater part of the 20th centuries due to the reign of Satan through Freemasonry. In this vision, the lady foretold that in these times, the sacraments would lose their importance and would not be held in high esteem among the faithful due to those who held a position of authority. The people would be used as tools of the devil to destroy the church. Due to this, many would be lost. Society itself would suffer greatly and a tremendous loss of vocations would be experienced. One day, when she was before the tabernacle, confining her secret sorrows to our Lord, she saw the tabernacle open and Christ himself emerged, suffering as he had at Golgotha. The Blessed Virgin at his feet was shedding tears of pearls. Then she heard the voice of the Eternal Father saying, this punishment will be for the 20th century. Then she saw three swords hanging over the head of Christ. On each was written, I shall punish heresy, blasphemy and impurity. The Holy Virgin asked her, My daughter, will you sacrifice yourself for the people of this time? Mother Mariana replied, I am willing. And immediately the swords moved away from the agonizing Christ and buried themselves in the heart of the sister who fell dead through the violence of the pain. Mother Mariana had indeed died and stood before the judgment seat of God who found no fault in her and invited her to receive the crown prepared for her since the beginning of the world. At the same time, her distraught sisters on earth implored heaven to restore the life of this exemplary sister. Our Lord then presented Mother Mariana with two crowns, one of immortal glory of indescribable beauty and the other of white lilies surrounded by thorns. Mother Mariana understood that if she chose the first, she would remain in heaven, but with the other, she would return to suffer on earth. It was a difficult struggle to make the choice. Our Lady approached her and said, My daughter, I left the glories of heaven and descended to earth to protect my children. I desire that you also imitate me in this and return to life, for your life is most necessary for the order of my conceptionists. Woe to the colony in the 20th century, if in Ecuador, already so guilty, there are not such souls who their lives of immolation and sacrifice appease the divine justice. Fire will fall from heaven consuming its inhabitants and purifying the soil of Quito. Until the end of time, one of these sacrificial souls will inhabit this convent and imitating you will appease divine justice. Trembling yet consoled by the promise of her divine mother, Mariana chose the crown of lilies surrounded with thorns and returned to the world to suffer. The sisters rejoiced since they had not stopped praying for her return to life. After returning to the world, she dedicated herself with great zeal to the practice of a monastic life. 
since god had given her the gift to discern souls she was able to guide her sisters under her care during the time as novice mistress mother mariana was imprinted interiorly with the most sacred wounds of our lord after this mysterious wounding her body became stiff and immovable as a rock only her eyes and mouth could move at the same time all sensible consolation was removed and she entered the dark night of tribulation suffering an intense interior desolation the devil appeared to her in the form of a serpent and tried to tempt her to despair by telling her that everything in her life had been illusions deceits and lies forsaken by heaven and earth suffered without relief feeling herself abandoned even by the holy virgin on 2nd february 1588 feast of the purification our lady appeared to her to dissipate the darkness of the night of her soul the queen of heaven dispelled the infernal serpent who gave a horrible scream of despair and hurled himself into hell with such a great roar that it caused the earth to tremble throughout the city and the convent after a few weeks respite the mysterious sickness returned although mother mariana no longer suffered the interior pain of abandonment at noon on good friday of that year 1588 death appeared imminent at 3:30 pm surrounded by her praying and weeping sisters mother mariana raised her eyes to heaven gazed at her crucifix pressed it against her heart and heaving a last sigh she died at the order of the mother abbess a body was taken to the lower choir so that for 3 days it might be viewed by the people of quito who crowded into the church to pray to her as their protecting angel the funeral mass and burial was set for monday however on easter sunday morning when the nuns entered the choir to recite the 4 am little office they found mother mariana praying as normal the sisters screamed and ran in horror certain that they were seeing a ghost mother mariana had resurrected a second time this time she would continue her life of hard penance and continual prayer for the next 47 years until her final death in 1635 interrogated by her confessor and the abbess mother mariana explained that upon her second death our lady had placed her soul in another state of purification and she had suffered a mystical purgatory that lasted until 3 am sunday morning the same hour christ had resurrected he then placed her soul back in her body restoring it to full strength and vigor mother mariana understood that god had restored her life so that she could experience in her own person how sweet and meritorious it is to suffer and endure pain in imitation of Christ becoming one with him in the holocaust for the future of the church thus the soul of this humble virgin was prepared and purified to receive the apparition of the three archangels and the sovereign empress under the invocation of our lady of good success as well as for the great trials and missions reserved for her she was only 25 years old then after the death of the first prioress in 1593 mother mariana de jesus torres was elected and installed as prioress at the age of 30 during that time there were many troubles in both the civil and ecclesiastical governments of the spanish colony of quito Spain was sending many saintly missionaries to Quito. They also included many of their indisciplined friars to the colony where they strove to relax the monastic rules. The spirit of revolt entered the royal convent of the Immaculate Conception through a native sister. This sister fueled the fire of revolt among many of the native sisters who had not received full orders and did the domestic work in the convent. These were jealous of the Spanish mothers especially of their holy abbess mother mariana because of this insubordination 
and plot to create separation among the sisters and also from the undisciplined conduct of the tertiary sisters. Mother Mariana sought recourse of our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament to find light, consolation and strength. On the morning of 2nd February 1594, she was praying prostrate on the floor in the upper choir of the convent when she felt the presence of someone who called her name. She rose and saw a most beautiful lady who carried the child Jesus in her left arm and a golden crozier adorned with precious stones in her right good success, the queen of heaven and earth. It is because you are a religious soul who loves God and his mother that I speak to you now. I have come from heaven to console your afflicted heart. She then told Mother Mariana that she carried Christ in her left arm in order to restrain the hand of the divine justice. In her right hand she carried the cross here, the abbess's staff, for she desired to govern the convent as prioress and mother. Her patronage and protection would be even more necessary during the future absence of the Franciscan friars as directors. She said, and I quote, With this, Satan will begin to try to destroy this work of God, making use of my ungrateful daughters. But he will not succeed because I am the queen of victories and the mother of good success. And under this invocation, I desire to be known throughout time for the preservation of my convent and inhabitants." Unquote. Our Lady warned Mother Mariana of the many sufferings in store for her. To strengthen her spirits, she placed the Divine Child in her arms and she embraced him next to her heart and felt within herself the strong desire to suffer. Shortly after this apparition, Mother Mariana's sufferings increased. Many times she saw our Lord crucified, agonizing and blasphemed and insulted. Even she saw and spoke to her seraphic father, Saint Francis, who guided her. Once again on 16 Jan 1599, Our Lady appeared as mother of good success and encouraged her in the mission which was entrusted to her. Our Lady then told her, It is the wish of my most holy son 
that you command a statue of me to be made just as you see me now and that you place it upon the throne of the abyss so that I may govern my convent. In my right hand place the cross here and keys to the cloister as a sign of my proprietorship and authority. In my left hand place my divine child first so that men understand how powerful I am in placating the divine justice and obtaining mercy and pardon for every sinner who comes to me with a contrite heart. For I am the mother of mercy and in me there is goodness and love. Secondly, so that throughout time my daughters will see that I am showing and giving them my most holy son and their God as a model of religious perfection. They should come to me for I will lead them to him. Then the heavenly queen told Mariana that she would give her the exact measurements so that the statue could be made just as she saw her there. When Mother Mariana protested that she could never sufficiently describe the beauty of her heavenly mother, Our Lady promised the help of St. Francis and in the angels in the making of the statue. In order to save her errant sisters who were disobedient and sinful, Mother Mariana agreed to suffer on earth for five years the pains of hell that were reserved for these sisters. On 20th January 1610, as she prayed before the Blessed Sacrament, she received a visit from the three messengers from heaven, Saint Michael, Saint Gabriel and Saint Raphael. Mother Mariana kept her bishop informed of all the happenings and sought his permission for the making of the statue of Our Lady. After the bishop gave his approval, Mother Mariana sent for Francisco del Castillo, a sculptor of talent and more important, a man of great virtue who loved Our Lady. He began working in the upper choir of the convent and the bishop himself would visit from time to time to see how the work was progressing. As the work neared completion, the sculptor decided that he would have to travel to Europe to find the best paints for the final coat of paint for the faces. He promised to return by January 16th 1611 to finish the project. On the night before his return, Mother Mariana pleaded with Our Lady to complete her statue herself as she had promised. In the early morning hours, while Mother Mariana was praying alone in the sanctuary, the church was illuminated with celestial lights. The tabernacle opened and she was given to understand the sublime mystery of the incarnation of the Divine Word in the womb of Mary Most Holy. She also realized the infinite love the three Divine Persons had for Mary who was present there, magnificent and captivating. Then the angel saluted the Queen of Heaven and bowed before her. In an instant, the heavenly trio ascended to the upper choir and finished the statue. Then Saint Francis, who was present as the archangels transformed the face of the statue, took his white cord and wrapped it around the waist of the holy statue. As the heavenly choir sang, the queen of angels amid this great joy approached the statue and entered into it. At that moment, the holy statue took on life and sang with the celestial choir, the Magnificat. It was 3 a.m. and the heavenly music awoke the sleeping sisters who came to the choir that was filled with brilliant light and they gasped in joy at the miraculous transformation. When Francisco del Castillo arrived at the convent the next morning to give his final touches to the great work, he cried out in astonishment to see the statue completed and he said, what am I seeing? This magnificent statue is not my work. I cannot express what my heart feels. This is an angelic work, for a work of this nature could not be created on this earth by the hands of a mere mortal. No sculptor, no matter how skilled, could ever render such perfection and such unearthly beauty." Unquote. The truth of this miracle was sworn to in handwritten documents by the sculptor and by the bishop 
who also was astounded at the transformation. A novena of preparation for the statue's formal installation was made and on 2nd February 1611, the bishop blessed the miraculous statue under the name of Mary of Good Success of the Purification. She was carried in procession to the upper choir to the throne prepared for her so that she might rule and govern her house. My dear friends, we will continue the second part which is very important tomorrow. In the meantime, let us pray to Our Lady seeking her help in our needs. God bless you. Jesus, conceived by the Spirit of God.